Richard, talk to us about uh, the treatment approaches you were using there in China on COVID paci patients, rather, and how TCM was used. Thank you, Mike, for having me back again. Haven't talked to you for over a year now. Yes, actually, uh, chi traditional Chinese medicine has been uh, influencing the world for quite a while now. And uh, particularly this time, uh, the various uh, recipes of traditional Chinese medicine have been used in various places. And I think, uh, uh, not to you, but I think I uh, talked to Elaine before, that uh, some of, uh, th there were so many clinical trials, eventually they ran out of patients to have enough numbers for clinical trials to, to be completed. And uh, uh, the results are pretty impressive. And there are quite a few uh, reports published in the literature of those clinical trials using traditional Chinese medicine uh, methods and that are, that are successful and effective in, in overall management of COVID-19 patients. I might, to add, I might want to add that uh, there are, at least in my view, I'm not, the age, I'm not trained as a traditional Chinese medicine doctor, although I did receive one year training while as I was at the Shanghai Medical University, that uh, the, the one part of traditional Chinese medicine is the actually the herbal, the acupuncture, the, the modern, the, the um, methods. But I think to me, more importantly, is the philosophy or the approach to medicine and health, which I summarize as integrative, as balanced, and also natural. And I see, you know, uh, you may know that uh, as, uh, as I Western tra I'm in training Western medicine, the internationally, there has been a surge in integrative medicine, functional medicine worldwide. And these so-called newly or alternative medicine, some people may call it, have been heavily influenced by uh, medicine thoughts, a school of thoughts like Indian medicine, uh, Chinese medicine, traditional medicine, uh, Chinese medicine. So that has been, to me, more influencing to Western world than the uh, herbal medicine or acupuncture per se, probably. And for me, for example, and I've been promoting and I've been also implementing integrative approach with this. And to me, for example, the way I see the COVID manage, I mean COVID-19 management parts that are missing or not being very focused or stressed on is the integrative holistic approach. You know, we really need to encourage people to live a healthy life, to boost their immunity with balanced healthy diets, exercise, nutrition. These are very critical, you know, in addition to vaccination, social distancing, facial masks and, uh, and other methods. Yeah, so well, I I was, I was going to say, one of the things that I know you've talked about in the past where, you know, I think the Western approach is, you know, we've got to get these drug companies and they've got to come up with these fantastic drugs. But getting back to what you were talking about with philosophy, um, you know, I know you've talked about vitamin C, you've talked about zinc. Those are things that are readily available to people uh, that, that a lot of us don't think about in the West. Yes, Mike, that's very critical, actually. You know, What's more important, you know, think about it. The vast majority of those COVID-19 infections were, are asymptomatic or mild to moderate. Only very few, a small percentage, very small percentage of those infections were developed into more serious uh, diseases. Why is that? It is pure because of the health status of their nutritional balance. And their, in, in summary, is their immunity. So that's common sense. You, you don't really need medical thinking to sort of to, to, to arrive at that conclusion. How, however, I don't see that being focused on. And I think that's a very sad, you know, sad part, you know, focusing on drug only. Drug is important, don't get me wrong. However, for, for the population-wide control, we really need to educate people on healthy lifestyle and diets, exercise, nutrition, these things that are inexpensive, readily, readily available, it doesn't cost a lot of money. And actually, if you really save money on unhealthy things, uh, you know, not spending money on unhealthy things, you, you actually save money, in my view. Let's talk about traditional Chinese medicine and, and just kind of its global footprint. We were talking about in Johannesburg where they're launching a, a, an effort there. Uh, also, the expansion in China. Uh, give us your thoughts on that. I think that's great. That's great. Because I know this has been going on for a while. And one of my school in alumni, who is now the president of uh, a traditional Chinese medicine university in Shanghai, 
has been doing this for the last couple of years. Every time I go to Shanghai, I, I may have a meal with him. And so I know it's an ongoing program of, uh, you know, the chi of China. And, and also, to me, this COVID-19 pandemic, it's a sad, tragic, you know, tragedy. However, I think something that good, uh, positive coming out of this is that uh, the population, the, the general, cons I mean, the consumers, I think they begin to pay attention to lifestyle, pay attention to diets, exercise, lifestyle, nutrition. And that, you know, uh, on top of that, the, 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 the integrative medic balance the view, you know, not, fo not drug focused, uh, uh, you know, not disease prevention. We always say, both in, in Chinese medicine and traditional, I mean, in Western medicine, we always say prevention first. However, that's only, you know, remaining as a slogan. We don't really put too much into, into our practice. And that's, I think that's bad. I think that I see a trend uh, among the consumers who begin to pay attention and begin to adapt to this uh, approach. You know, we don't really have to go into the deep philosophy, but just common sense, some common sense practice. You common, know. common sense. I, I, by the, yeah. yeah. I was just going to say, that's always good advice. I uh, can't thank you enough uh, for your analysis and also for all you did there on the front lines uh, in the efforts to fight this uh, nasty pandemic. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Mike, for having me back again. You bet.